Joel, who's a guy, if you could bottle sort of his mentality and his approach to this program and what it takes here and give it to every kid that walks in here, who would that be? I think it would be John Calipari. You know, <laughs> I mean, really, player, I mean, player I think that, yeah, but I think Cal is the guy that makes this thing go. Yeah. Um, you know, he's a guy that, that has the blueprint, that has had the vision and, and works tirelessly, you know, to put forth uh, the vision um, to create the habits. Uh, he's the guy that's built the culture. You know, we've gone out and we've found the right guys uh, to actually do it. You know, but I mean, I think if you're going to bottle up, you know, the the mindset and, and the values and he's the guy uh, that, that makes it work. Uh, I think kind of flipping back around to I think we've had a ton of guys, you know, because uh, it, you, know, you can go from a guy most recently, you know, even on last year's team, P.J. Washington. All right. He figured it out, you know, maybe and, and everybody's on their different path. Tyler Hero kind of came in with a different kind of swagger or mentality. PJ figured it out once he was here. Keldon Johnson came in and really had to relearn basketball. He had to relearn what is the values of winning basketball. Um, but I think you've had a, a collection of guys over Cal's 10 years that, that really figure it out. Some do early, some do late. Is there a guy on this team that kind of embodies the the approach that it takes to succeed here? I think they all do. You know, I, I think they're they're figuring it out day by day um, because it's what is going to make them their best. You know, that's what we talk about here daily, and, and Cal really preaches it, is what are you doing to become your best? Uh, what does your best version look like? And, and I think every one of our guys are driven or they wouldn't be here. Uh, through the process, we talk about that. You know, this is going to be tough. This is going to be a challenge, and this is going to be about you fighting every single day to become your best. Um, so each one of these guys knows knows what's there and what's out there, and, and they have decided to come be a part of the culture because our culture is is one that is winning basketball, being a professional every single day, and those guys have decided to come here. They want it. It just everyone's on their different path. It's kind of shifting gears on you. Tyrese is the son of a coach, obviously, mm -hmm. and you've had a few of those come through here. What's the value of a guy that, you know, grows up in a house where you're talking, in his case specifically, his dad, I think, had him breaking down film of himself when he was in middle school. Is there, can you see that in his game, a, a different level of understanding because of it? You know, Tyrese is a, is a kid who – is always wanting to learn. You know, he has an insatiable thirst for coaching, uh, being taught, wanting to listen, wanting to see kind of the game from from different angles or through different folks' eyes. And uh, when you have those kinds of people around you, whether they're coaches, whether they're players, whether they're managers, you're going to have a great culture. And, and, and Tyrese is a guy who has been brought up that way, obviously, like you said, from a coach, but I think that's great coaches you want to learn. You always are wanting to learn new things, see things in a different way, and, and that's that's who Tyrese is, and it's obviously valuable for us because when you have people like that in your locker room, they're going to – All others. Yeah, and I think that they're going to always be the, the guy that is thinking that way versus the guy that's kind of in his own little – shell or in his own little world that, that only sees basketball one way. Going back to your best version of yourself that, that you mentioned, are you guys far enough along where you've identified for these new guys a couple of things that, that helps them be that, or are you still in the process of trying to find out? I think you're always trying to find out, you know, who, who you can become. I think early in the season, you know, you try to get them in a, in a position to where they're going to be their most successful today. Okay, now let's start building on that daily. But today, all right, this is who you are right now. Let's be really, really good at this. Uh, and I think you can see that just off of their natural talent or what they kind of bring to the table today, October 31st. All right, well, now let's, let's now look at this and say, okay, well, these are the areas that we have to improve for you to play winning basketball and for us to play winning basketball. So it's always changing, but there's not going to be this – seismic shift in terms of who the player is uh, November 1st versus April 1st.
Joel Cal made a big deal in the preseason about not wanting to be a, a hat on the table uh, with recruiting, and I know that's something you guys have focused on recently too. How, how do you make sure that doesn't happen? I mean, ultimately, you get the guys. You know, I think that's the that's the the, the, the first place is you get yeses. But uh, we all know we can't get yeses from everybody, and and you don't want yeses from everybody. I, I think our our biggest thing and our role is to to get out there and to find the information, uh, find out who is really built for Kentucky, who's you know kind of built to be a, a, a champion, who's built to be a guy who wants to work every single day, who wants to be a great teammate, and you know that comes through time, that comes through information, um, and I, I think as, as far as just being ahead of what might happen, and then some of that comes with being involved earlier, so you kind of can see the young people develop. Uh, from an earlier time in their high school career to the end. Some of it is, you know, kind of like a, a Shea recruitment or an Ashton recruitment where you've really got to jump in and you might not have that much time. So you're, you kind of go all, got to go off of your gut a little bit and, and the feel of the situation. Do you, feel, do you see this program in the future trying to make a consistent effort to get older guys like Reed, Nate? I think it... it it goes back to finding the right guys. You know, I think whether they're in high school, whether they're, uh, you know, five star, four star, whatever it is, you've got to have the right people. Um, you know, you can't really tell kind of what that group is going to look like until a later date. Whereas if you're looking at high school players, you're kind of seeing who they're going to be. You know that there's a, an end date. Now it gets a little tricky, obviously, with the reclassification. The kids are kind of bumping up, so you're looking at them in a two-year window. College kids, you can't really do that with, with a, a grad transfer. You can kind of guess, but you're not really knowing, all right, well, this group of guys is going to be available like you can with, with high school kids. I think it's, been, it's worked out well with Reed. Uh, I think we're very happy with where Nate is. You know, right now, but I, I think it all goes back to: Do they want this? You know, do they want to be a part of the culture? Do they want to be uh, here as a teammate? Do they want to come to work every day and get better? Whether you're a high school kid, whether you're a grad transfer, and then can we get them to where they want to go? Do we really believe that we can help them achieve their goals here? Um, I think that's the goal, whether they're a high school kid or whether they're a grad transfer.